Okay, good afternoon, everyone. So we will begin our lesson today. So the lesson today okay, is going to be ion polarization and solubility of sulfates and hydroxide. And we, uh, if we have time, then we will continue with transition metals. Okay, so here, okay, uh, this is going to be an extension to lattice energy. Yeah. So this one, if you look for the textbook and then you couldn't find this chapter, yeah, basically it is in under lattice energy. So without wasting uh, any more time, okay. So I will start with this chapter. Okay, you can see, okay, the first thing that we need to learn, okay, uh, in this part is going to be what we call as ion polarization, yeah. So what is ion polarization, okay? So when you look at, okay, uh, ionic compounds, okay, ionic compounds, we have metal and non-metal, okay? So generally, we expect, okay, when you have metal and non-metal, yeah, you have positive ion, the cation, negative ion, which is going to be the anion, they are going to be perfectly in a uh, spherical shape, okay? We assume like that, okay? But please understand that many ionic compounds, okay, they have covalent character, okay, due to bond polarization. So it means like they will have something like uh, the next picture over here, something like a covalent character as though their electrons are being shared to another, yeah. So they will have that character, Okay, why they have that character? Okay, because, okay, because the positive ions, okay, the positive ions of the cation, they may attract the electrons, okay, from the anions, okay? So it will result, okay, in what we call as a distortion, okay, of the electron cloud. Okay, what is distortion of the electron cloud? So if you have, okay, the electron cloud, Okay, in perfectly spherical shape, okay, the anion have that electron cloud. So the positive ion, the cation, will actually try to disturb that electron cloud and they will actually make the electron cloud to be closer okay, to the positive ion over there. So that is what we call as distortion. Okay, so this ability okay, to attract electron and ability to distort the anion or distort the electron cloud from the anion. This is what we call as polarizing power. So when we say polarizing power, we are referring from the cation. Cation is the one that is going to polarize your anions. Okay, so they are going to attract the electron, okay, from the anions so that they are going to have something like this. So here, okay, you can actually refer what is expected, okay, from your syllabus over here. But I will actually just move on. You see, when we are looking at ion polarization, okay, we are going to look at certain factors, okay. What enables, okay, that cation to be able to attract the uh, electrons from the anion? What enables them Okay, to be able to distort okay, the electron cloud from the anion. So in order to do that, okay, the cation, okay, we need to look at the cation. The cation must have okay, what we call as a high charge density. Now, what is charge density? Last time we have already learned under lattice energy. Charge density is going to be charge okay, uh, in that volume. So in volume of that atom or something, okay, we refer to radius. It's directly proportional to radius. So charge over radius. So that is charge density. So if you have, okay, the cation has a lot of charge density, it means that Okay, the cation now, okay, the radius must be very small. Okay, so that's why you see small cation. Why the radius being small? If the radius is going to be small, our charge density is going to be a bigger number. Yeah, something divided by small value. Okay, you will have more charge density. So if you have more charge density, they will be very powerful. Yeah, they will be very powerful. The, a lot of the positive charges are going to be highly dense okay, at that particular cation. Yeah? And then they are going to be able to uh, distort okay, the anion so that they are going to actually bring the 
um, electron cloud okay to be distorted in this way so the first one okay is going to be you must have the small cation and of course okay you need to have higher positive charge okay you can see the charge density again okay if you have more charge okay generally the charge density will be greater so if you have more charge density okay the ability okay to distort the electron cloud from the anion will be greater okay so these two yeah so these two are going to be related to your charge density now if we are just looking at the cation yes we are referring to the charge density how about okay if we want to look at it in form of anion okay what makes okay uh, the ion to be distorted what makes the anion to be easily distorted by cation uh, then in order to do that you need to remember okay positive okay attracts negative okay therefore if you have more negative over here okay it means distortion is going to be greater okay more negative and if you have okay if you have the radius okay to be greater okay if the great radius is going to be greater okay you are going to be able to distort the electron cloud better as well why because the electrons okay they are not held uh, tightly okay to the nucleus so therefore okay they are going to be able to be attracted or distorted by the cations so these are the two in a point of view of anions you see the anion must be large okay and the anion must be having large uh, or more negative charges so these are the factors that will affect polarization okay this is ion polarization so if we try to recall again if you are looking at the cation cation must be small okay and then the positive charge must be greater okay so basically we are looking at charge density must be greater so if you are looking at the negative anion the anion okay it means we are talking about the bigger radius why because they are going to be able to be distorted because less attraction of the nucleus towards the electron and we are expecting the negative charges to be more because positive attracts negative more so we want it to be more negative so these are the factors okay that will affect the ion polarization let's see whether you really understand what i taught you just now yeah so you see here checkpoint number one explain why a cation okay with a smaller ionic radius okay has a higher charge density okay according to the formula yes charge density equals to charge okay divided by radius okay so that is going to be the formula for it okay and we know smaller ionic radius this is going to be uh, smaller okay and then this is going to make the charge density to become greater but this is not how you answer in your exam okay we answer it okay because you have a certain part uh, a certain charge and this charge is going to be this distributed in a smaller volume okay the charge is spread out over a smaller volume so if you spread out that charge in a smaller volume the share your screen again my screen again okay let me continue yeah so we have okay like for example if i have okay five k okay, positive over there okay and then in a smaller volume and i have five positive in a bigger volume you can see that okay the charge
as a smaller volume will be really much more greater okay, compared to okay, having uh, a bigger volume and you are going to share okay, the charges in that particular bigger volume. Okay? So therefore, okay, it is important to look at it in that way. Okay? So uh, now, okay, if we move on okay, to uh, the second part, okay, which is going to be which one okay, of the following ions okay, will be the best polarizer Okay, of the large nitrate ion. Okay, let me, I think my internet okay, is a bit slow. Let me restart. Hold on, yeah. Okay, while waiting for me, yeah, you can actually one of the following ions, okay, will be the best polarizer okay, of the large nitrate ion. So the negative ion over here is the nitrate. Okay? So we are going to have these uh, examples of this uh, cation. Okay? We want to find out which one is the best polarizer. So the best polarizer okay, must be something that has a small radius and must be something that has the larger positive charge. And if you look at the charge wise, all of them, they have the same charge, positive one, yeah? So the only uh, factor that might affect over here is going to be the size. And if you look at the size, okay, lithium, okay? Lithium is the smallest, the one from the periodic table, you can have a look. The one at the top of the periodic table, okay, is going to be the smallest. So therefore, okay, the lithium ion is the smallest ionic radius. And therefore, okay, it has the highest charge density which can polarize the anion okay quite simple as well now next question is which one of these ions okay will be most polarized by mg2 plus so this is going to be the cation and i am going to look into anion so if i'm looking into anion so the anion must be okay more negative okay but you can see it's going to be all of them are going to be negative one the charge so I need to look at the size that is going to be bigger. Size that is going to be the biggest size, if you look at your periodic table, it's going to be FCBI. Uh, yeah, so if you look at over here, okay, the size, the biggest size is going to be the one that is going to be at the bottom. Okay, the iodide ion, okay, the iodide ion is going to be the biggest size. The radius is going to be greater. So the one that is going to be most polarized, the anion that will be distorted more is going to be the iodide ion, okay, which is going to be, they have the largest ionic radius. You do not need to mention going to be large therefore okay the because of the large radius of the iodide okay we are going to tell that anion is going to be uh, uh this iodide anion is going to be most polarized over here yeah this is going to be the situation now so that is going to be the the checkpoint okay what is uh what we expect you to know okay is going to be cation okay it, it can become a rice okay the anion given the charge density is going to be high yeah how to get higher charge density by having more uh, positive charge and by having smaller radius uh, this is going to be for the cation how do we actually have something that can be polarized easily, anion. So the anion must have more negative charge. And then the size of the anion, they okay, must be bigger. Yeah. So that is going to be the summary for that. Now, if you look at the, okay, why we actually learn about ion polarization, because it is related to thermal stability. Yeah, it's related to thermal stability of group two carbonates and nitrates. Now, for the uh, for the introduction, okay, I will just put okay, this uh, uh, write the equation okay for the decomposition of calcium carbonate. Write the thermal decomposition equation for calcium nitrate. All of you should be able to write this. Yeah, so calcium carbonate, okay, when they undergo thermal decomposition, 
they will give you calcium oxide and carbon dioxide gas. Yeah, the oxide and carbon dioxide. And then if you have calcium nitrate, okay, calcium nitrate, this one, okay, when they undergo thermal decomposition, they are going to give you calcium oxide, NO2, and then you will get O2. Okay, this one, you can actually balance this by putting two there, okay, and then it's going to be balanced. Okay, so in order, okay, for this thermal decomposition uh, to work, Basically, the bond okay, is broken. Okay, the bond is broken. To be exact, okay, uh, there will be bond broken, bond forming, and so on. But to be exact, okay, we need to look into the anion. Okay? So we look into anion because we are going to relate okay, our ion polarization to this concept. Okay? So anion, okay? the anion over here is going to be carbonate and the anion over here is going to be nitrate. So let's actually look uh, in detail, yeah? But if you look over here in this uh, table, okay, this table is telling us about magnesium carbonate, okay, calcium carbonate, strontium carbonate, barium carbonate. It means going down group uh, two carbonates. And you can see the decomposition uh, temperature. The decomposition temperature is going to, uh, from 540, then it becomes 1360 degrees Celsius. So it means that okay, you require okay, more uh, heat okay, to decompose barium carbonate. And if you look a uh, change into enthalpy change of reaction, you can also refer there is more energy required okay, to change or to decompose barium carbonate. Okay, so this is going to be from the table. But let's say we want to extract the information from the table. Uh, this is very important and you should be able to extract this information. Like for example, if they ask you which carbonate is the most stable carbonate, stable carbonate means they don't decompose or difficult to decompose. So which one is difficult to be decomposed? You can see the one that requires more energy, the one that requires more heat okay, to be decomposed. So in this case, which one is going to be more stable? Okay, the most stable is going to be barium carbonate. Very important. Yeah? And then, which carbonate is the least thermally stable in the table? Least thermally stable means they are not stable. The moment you introduce heat, they break down. The moment you introduce the heat, they are going to decompose. Uh, you can see the one that requires less amount of heat is going to be the magnesium carbonate. Okay, So easily decompose. So this is going to be the magnesium carbonate. And if let's say the third question, which carbonate is most difficult to be decomposed? Most difficult to be decomposed require more energy, Okay, require more heat, uh, then it's going to be barium carbonate again. So you need to know how to apply this term. The term that I want you to apply is going to be the thermally stable. Yeah, Thermally stable means, okay, if something is more thermally stable means, they are stable at high temperature. So they do not get decomposed easily. Uh, very important, please remember that, yeah? Now, this is going to be just from the data alone, okay? But now, how do we ex uh, explain okay, the trend using ion polarization? If you look at the trend, okay, you see from uh, going up, um, from up to down, yeah, group two, okay, uh, group two carbonates, you can see that, okay, the thermal stability, okay, is going to be increasing. Okay, thermal stability is going to be increasing. Why thermal stability is increasing? Because it's going to be difficult okay, to decompose barium carbonate. Okay, difficult to decompose barium carbonate. So that is why we say thermal stability increases. Or I can say that going down the uh, group two carbonate is going to be difficult to decompose. Now, that is going to be what we did in the previous checkpoint. But now, okay, how do we apply ion polarization? Let's look at the ion. If you are looking at the anion over here, all of them are going to be carbonate. Yeah, all of them are going to be carbonate. And if you look at the cation, okay, you have magnesium ion. So I will just put magnesium ion. Calcium ion will be bigger a bit. Strontium will be bigger. And then barium is going to be bigger. 
Okay, all these are going to be positive ions. And these positive ions, okay, just now I told you, if you have cations, okay, if you have more charge density, okay, they are going to be able to polarize the anion. In this case, they are going to be able to polarize carbonate ion. Okay, so if you look at the one that is able to polarize the carbonate ion, is going to be definitely going to be magnesium. Why? Size, the radius is going to be the smallest radius. Okay, the charge is still the same. All of them have two plus, positive two, yeah, group two. Okay, so all of them have two plus, so no problem with the charge. Only, okay, the radius, the radius is going to be smallest over there. It means that magnesium is able okay, to polarize the carbonate. Just imagine the carbonate used to be like this, okay, used to be like this. But now, okay, the carbonate is going to be polarized like this, okay, it's going to have the covalent character, okay. When this distortion happens, okay, when this distortion happens, what happens to the bond between the carbon and oxygen? The carbon and oxygen, they are going to be, the bond is going to be weakened, okay. So what happened, okay, the bond, because of the distortion, okay, the bond is going to be broken easily, okay, to give you carbon dioxide, and then this one, if you have calcium, two plus, then calcium oxide will be formed. That is how, okay, the thermal decomposition actually works, okay, because of the uh, ion polarization, okay, the ion polarization will make, okay, will make the bond between carbon and oxygen, okay, in the uh, uh, anion to be weakened, and that will make, okay, that will make the uh, decomposition to happen. So that's why you see more polarization happens for magnesium, okay, therefore, okay, you are going to actually weaken the bond easier to decompose. This is less polarization happening for barium, okay, less polarization happening to barium. Uh, barium cannot distort the carbonate anion. Therefore, okay, the bonds between carbon and oxygen is quite strong, okay, and therefore it's going to be difficult to break the bond and decompose them that's why the temperature is going to be higher, okay? That is going to be the explanation when it comes to this decomposition and ion polarization, okay? Hope you understand on this, yeah? So if we move on, okay, let's actually see whatever things that I thought over here, can you really understand? Like, for example, in summary, yeah, why magnesium nitrate undergoes thermal decomposition at much lower temperature than barium nitrate? Now, the anion is nitrate, okay, nitrate NO3 minus, yeah. So, we are talking about, we are comparing magnesium and barium. Mg2 plus is at the top of the periodic table, group 2, okay. This is Mg2 plus. And then barium should be at the bottom, okay. The size is going to be bigger, okay. So, if you look over here, magnesium 2 plus, and then let's say, for example, this is going to be the anion, same size, yeah. So the anion will be same size, okay, nitrate. So I want to find out, okay, whether, okay, the magnesium or barium 2 plus is the one that will, uh, will polarize nitrate better, okay. The one that will be able to polarize the nitrate better is going to be the one that has, okay, the smallest size over here. Because you see, the charge is the same, okay. The size of magnesium is smaller, so they are going to be able to polarize the nitrate ion. It means that they are going to, magnesium is going to, magnesium ion is going to weaken the bond between nitrogen and oxygen, okay? Because of that, okay, because of that, okay, the bond will be broken between nitrogen and oxygen, okay? Therefore, okay, therefore you are going to get magnesium oxide, nitrogen dioxide, and then you can have the oxygen. Uh, that is the explanation, okay? You can actually get more explanation over here, okay? But that is the essence or that is the summary of the entire thing that I have mentioned just now, okay? If you move on, okay? 
So that is the part about ion polarization. Okay, we will actually enter the next part. Okay, which is going to be okay, the lattice energy, enthalpy of solution, and enthalpy of vibration. When you hear about this, uh, we already learned about this. Why we are learning about this again? You might be thinking about that. Okay, but okay, remember okay, that last time okay, when I did the lecture one and lecture two, I mentioned about we will revisit this again. Yeah, something I think mentioned about back to the future moment. Uh, this is going to be the back to the future moment that I mentioned earlier. Yeah, so if you look at it okay, in this particular slide, I mentioned about okay, what is lattice energy. We have already learned, yeah. Is going to be one mole of ionic compound formed from its gases ions. Okay, under standard condition, you can actually look at the equation and so on. Yeah. Okay, but do remember lattice energy is always negative. Okay, and then we also learn about hydration. Okay, what is hydration? Is the energy absorbed or released? Yeah. When one mole of ionic solid dissolves in sufficient uh, water to form a very dilute solution. Uh, the equation, you can actually have a look at the equation over there. But important over here is K okay, enthalpy of solution. It okay, can be either positive, it can be also negative. But you need to also remember, okay, if let's say the enthalpy of solution is going to be negative, then we can say that uh, solid is going to be soluble. Yeah? Or it can, if it is going to be soluble, if they have the small positive value like 3.9, K2.9 okay, is possible to be soluble. But if your enthalpy of solution is going to be a very po uh, large positive value, okay, then we can say that they are insoluble. Yeah, this one is actually what we have learned last time. Okay, now if you move on okay, to this enthalpy change of hydration, okay. Now for enthalpy change of hydration, okay, it's going to be the enthalpy change. When one mole of specified gases ion dissolve in sufficient water to form a very dilute solution. So this one is going to be specified gases ion. You see, the only difference over here is most of the time we do it together. You see this solid with aqueous. Okay? Then you see this one, okay, gas and gas together, still together. But for enthalpy of hydrate, they are going to be, each of them is going to be uh, written separately. Let's say this is sodium bromide. Okay, sodium bromide, okay, sodium ion gases form. Okay, you add with water, you are going to get sodium ion in aqueous form. So there will be two equations, okay, for this. So something like that, okay, enthalpy of hydration. But what is important over here, because we are dealing with the bond formation between ion, gases, ion, and water, it means that it's always bond forming, okay? If it is always bond forming, it's going to be always negative, yeah? Please remember that. It's always negative. And we say that, okay, enthalpy change of hydration is going to be more exothermic, okay? When smaller ionic radii and large charge, okay, is going to be there. So basically, we are talking about charge density also here. Yeah, how it works, basically, if you have okay, more charge density over here, okay, of course, the bond between okay, uh, the ion and the water will be greater. Yeah, that is the meaning, actually. Yeah? So this one you can read. Yeah? You can read. If you're still not sure, okay, you still don't know, why is this one so fast? Okay, we have spent one hour okay, for this uh, lecture last time. So please actually recall this. Okay, you can actually watch that lecture again. Okay, but for now, okay, we will move on because this is important because the one that we are going to learn is going to be related to this. Yeah. So if you look over here, okay, if you try to uh, recall what we have learned, yeah, uh, checkpoint number four, okay, enthalpy change in solution. Let's say if you are de uh, dealing with the uh, enthalpy change of solution, let's say for example, uh, NaCl. Okay, NaCl, okay, and then I want to uh, look uh, at the enthalpy change of solution. You see, how do we write down for enthalpy change of solution? It's going to be, you add, okay, if, let's say, for example, you see solid, you add aqueous. So let's say, for example, I put solid, I add aqueous, then I can write down NaCl aqueous, okay, something like that. Okay, that will be equation. And then the enthalpy can be positive or negative. And then we already discussed just now in the table, yeah? Soluble, if it is going to be small positive value or negative, 
or if it is going to be large positive value, it's going to be insoluble. Let's apply that concept over here. If I ask you, okay, using all this information in the enthalpy of solution, find out, okay, which one is going to be the most soluble uh, compound over here. The answer will be automatically the one that is going to be the most negative value. Okay, the most negative value over here is going to be sodium bromide. Therefore, this is going to be the most soluble. Okay? And if I want to find out, find out another one more compound that most probably will be soluble. Okay, the answer will be this one also. This will be soluble as well because it's a small positive value. Yeah, and then if you look at these two uh, compounds, okay, 65.7 and then 84.5, because it's a large positive value, they are going to be insoluble. And then in chemistry, if you are studying chemistry, you should know like silver chloride, silver bromide, okay, the color, yeah, they are precipitate. You should know what is the color also. Silver chloride is going to be white precipitate, okay. And then silver bromide is going to be a cream precipitate. Okay, it's not written here. Silver iodide. Yeah, silver iodide. Then the silver iodide is going to be yellow precipitate. So all this, okay, we will apply. Yeah, we will apply on it. Okay, now if you look at this checkpoint number five, this is the same checkpoint, okay, that we had in lecture number two. Okay, so I'm not going to discuss this. I just put over here so that you can recall this again, okay? If you want, you can actually try checkpoint five. The answers are given there, okay? So I will move on to checkpoint number six. Same also, okay, in the lecture two, okay, we have uh, this similar question, but maybe we can go very fast, you see? KBR solid, solid plus aqueous, okay? Solid plus aqueous, this is going to be enthalpy change of solution, yeah? And then K plus in gaseous form, if it is gas, okay, you add with aqueous, then it's going to be your hydration, okay? So we have two types of hydration for the cation and anion. So make sure you tell this is enthalpy change of hydration of K plus, okay? And then this one, two, uh, two uh, ions, like for example, cation and anion to form one mole of solid. Uh, this one, everyone should know. So yeah, lattice energy. Okay, lattice energy for KBR. Okay, and then Br minus plus aqueous, the moment you see it's gas, it's going to be hydration. So enthalpy change of hydration. So make sure, okay, you know how to differentiate solution, hydration, and lattice energy. Yeah. So now once you have that, uh, know that, yeah, I'm very sure you know about this. Yeah. Okay. If you don't know, go and revise again. Okay. And there is a relationship between these three uh, uh, enthalpies. Okay. If you want to memorize, I think last time I told you, let your soul go and hide. Okay. How to use that? Let. Okay. And then let your soul go and hide. Let your soul go. Yeah. Let your soul go. So it's going to be let equals to hydration minus solution, or okay, you can actually simplify hydration equals to lattice plus solution. Uh, this is only for the weaker students, yeah? Or uh, if you find it difficult, you're not sure, yeah, you can memorize this. But once you are advanced in it, you don't know, do not need to use this, let your soul go and hide and so on. No need, because the moment you look at the von Haber cycle, you will know the relationship. And this is an example, okay? You should be able to draw this von Haber cycle involving this, okay? Um, this is one example that I took from the lecture two also, yeah? So if it is going to be, you have, okay, the enthalpy of solution, this one, NAF, okay? So this is lattice energy. You should know, judging from this equation, uh, this diagram, you should know hydration, okay? This is hydration. Hydration equals to these two, which is going to be lattice plus solution, which is the same equation as the one that we have over here, okay? So the relationship you should know, okay, should know. If you are still weak at it, yeah, I already passed to you, yeah, in this uh, PowerPoint notes, okay, there is a video link where I guide you on this drawing of this von Haber cycle, okay? But if you look over here, Okay, now, okay, why we are learning this, okay, the important reason why we are learning this is because 
we want to explore about the solubility of group 2 sulfates and hydroxide. In your AS, okay, it is a requirement for you to memorize or to know that solubility of sulfate going down group 2, the solubility decreases. How do I memorize this? Okay, quite simple. I think all students should know. Okay, barium sulfate is going to be a white precipitate. Okay, if barium sulfate is a white precipitate, barium is going to be at the bottom of group two. Yeah. Okay, so barium is going to be at the bottom. So generally, group two, when you go down, I can say because this is solid, barium sulfate is going to be solid. I can tell, yeah, they are going to slowly become something that is going to be insoluble. So therefore, I can straight, uh, straight away, some students, they use this method. Yeah, they know solubility of sulfates decreases down the group two, okay? That is one way of remembering, okay? Another uh, uh, thing that you need to remember is going to be the solubility of hydroxides. Solubility of hydroxide is going to be the other way around. If let's say sulfates solubility decreases, for hydroxide, the solubility increases, okay? So it's going to be the other way around. And we tell in AS, no need to worry so much about okay, the reason. Okay, you just remember first. Okay, but in A2, you cannot, okay, you cannot just uh, memorize, okay, because when they ask you in paper four, okay, ask you about the solubility of sulfate, solubility of hydroxides, you must explain, okay, based on the lattice energy, based on the enthalpy of hydration, based on enthalpy of solution. You must explain using that, okay? So if I move on, you see here, okay, what is important over here before you start to explain about this enthalpy uh, of hydration and so on, you just need to remember, okay, if let's say we are dealing with the same charge, okay, generally group two, yeah, we are talking about group two, it means plus two, it means we are dealing with the same charge of the ion. If you have a smaller ion, okay, in this case, cation, okay, smaller ions, okay, have the greater enthalpy of hydration. Uh, this one, okay, I already told you, it's also related to your charge density, okay, also related to your charge density. Generally, the smaller ion, it means Na uh, plus gas, okay, plus with aqueous, we give you Na plus aqueous. So they are forming the bond between water and the ion, okay? If you have a smaller cation, okay, and then we can say the charge density is greater, it means the forming of the bond is going to be greater. It's going to be uh, more, um, more uh, how to say, there will be more, more uh, enthalpy, yeah? So how to say there will be more exothermic reaction. Sorry, yeah. So there will be more exothermic reaction because they are going to form a bond, yeah, form bond with each other. But if you look at the going down the group, yeah, going down the group, we know the magnesium is small, and then after that, all the way to barium, barium is getting bigger. Okay, so Mg two plus is small, barium two plus is bigger. So what can you say about the charge density? Charge divide the radius. The radius is getting bigger and bigger. If the radius is getting bigger and bigger, so we can say the charge density is getting smaller. So it means that the bond over here is not that strong, okay? So it's not going to give you a lot of uh, energy, okay? So we say the enthalpy of hydration decreases, yeah? Magnitude-wise, yeah? Magnitude-wise, it is going to be, or you can say it will become less negative, okay? So I'll just put it over. Okay, less negative. Yeah, it takes time to appear over that. But again, okay, it's going to become less negative as you go down the group uh, two. Now, if I move on, okay, if you look at these uh, changes in lattice energy, now we know, okay, going down group two, okay, your enthalpy change in hydration is going to decrease. Now, how about lattice energy? Yeah, lattice energy also, okay, we look at it Na plus, okay, uh, gases form, then Cl minus gases form to give you an ACL, something like this. This is lattice energy. And then this is solid, okay? 
And if the ions are the same charge, okay, so let's say same charge, lattice energy are greater if the ions are smaller. Yeah, so basically more charge density, they are going to form better bond. Yeah, so this one everyone knows. But if you are dealing with, uh, let's say, for example, the same charge and then let's say going down the group, let's say magnesium, okay, calcium, strontium and barium. So what happens, magnesium is small, okay, barium is big, okay. Mg2 plus and then barium is big. So what happens over here, okay, is going to be uh, as the radius increases, charge density is going to become less. Yeah? So what happens over here, lattice energy also is going to be affected. Now, how they are going to be affected? Yeah, of course, you see, it's going to be decreasing. Okay, so it means also decrease. Okay, but do remember, the decrease okay, of the lattice energy and the hydration is going to be slightly different. Why? Because okay, hydration is normally written, the equation for cation is written separately. The equation for anion are written separately. Okay? But for lattice energy, the equation for the lattice energy are written together. Uh, this is going to, will, uh, it will affect Okay, the changes, yeah, both of them will decrease, but one of them will decrease more than the other, yeah. So if you look at these uh, differences in the enthalpy change of solution, yeah, I think this one, okay, I have summarized this, but I'll show you in the table, yeah. So if you look over here, group two sulfates, okay, and then group two hydroxide, going down the group, okay, we know that, okay, group two sulfates, Okay, they are going to become less soluble. Okay, they are going to become less soluble. This is going to become more soluble. Okay, more soluble. And then, okay, we know, okay, for both, okay, lattice energy and enthalpy change of hydration, both of them, as you go down, we know it will decrease. Okay, it will decrease. Okay, but please remember, okay, for lattice energy, okay, uh, for let, uh, for Sulfate, yeah, okay, sulfate, the decrease in hydration is going to be larger value. Later, I'll explain to you, yeah, in form of diagram, okay? And then, okay, because of that, okay, what happens to your enthalpy of solution? Because we have a relationship between them, right? So what happens, okay, your enthalpy of solution starts to become more positive. The moment it becomes more positive, okay, this one just now we have learned enthalpy of solution. If you have a large positive, okay, it will become less soluble, yeah. So the solubility decreases. Yeah, these are the key points that you need to use when you answer the question. Yeah, but for hydroxide, it's going to be the other way around. Yeah, if it is going to be hydration, it's going to decrease at larger value. But for hydroxide, lattice energy is going to decrease at a uh, larger value, yeah? And then, okay, you are going to have, okay, the enthalpy of solution to become more negative, solubility increases. Quite difficult to visualize, then, okay, we will look at this, uh, uh, this graph, yeah? So I'll try to represent this, okay, using graph. So here, okay, we have sulfate, okay, we have sulfate. And then I'm going to actually tell, okay, I'm going to draw for strontium, for example, yeah? Strontium is going to be at the bottom of the group two. Uh, group two. Okay, I know that. Okay, uh, hydration decreases more. Okay, than lattice energy. Yeah, for sulfate. Yeah, I told you to memorize. So let's say. Okay, I'm still going to draw the same graph. Okay, I'm going to start with uh, strontium sulfate. You see, yeah, same side. Yeah, strontium sulfate solid. Okay, and then. Let's say now, okay, we know the lattice energy is going to decrease. So instead of writing this one at here, okay, I just want the lattice energy to decrease. So let's say I decrease the lattice energy up to here. Okay, this is going to be my decrease. Okay, this is my decrease. So I'm going to draw here and then say that this is going to be my strontium gas and then uh, sulfate gas okay and this is my lattice energy which is already decreased yeah which is already decreased so now okay i need to draw okay for uh my hydration okay hydration is going to be you see over here this is going to be my hydration the length 
Okay, you can see the arrow, the length. But now I know the hydration decreased more. Okay, so if let's say decrease more means, okay, I can uh, I can copy this and put it over here. Okay, paste. Okay, but they say they decrease more, you know. Okay, so decrease by more than this. Okay, more than this one. I'll just use the big in here. Yeah? More than this length. Okay, let's say I try to decrease this more than that. Okay, maybe this is roughly similar to this. Yeah. Okay, decrease more than that. So I decrease more. Maybe somewhere here. Okay, maybe somewhere here. Decrease more. So maybe now I will adjust the line to come over here. Okay, if I adjust. Okay, and then I put like this. Okay, and then say, this is going to be my strontium, okay, sulfate and aqueous. Now, what I notice over here, okay, I'll use the, the yellow pen over here. Now, you see, just now, this is your enthalpy of solution, okay, enthalpy of solution. But now, this is going to be your enthalpy of solution now. Okay, now your enthalpy of solution, okay, what happened to your enthalpy of solution? Okay, you can see from the magnitude of the enthalpy of solution, it's getting more positive, yeah? If it is getting more positive, okay, we should know, yeah, I already told you, if your solution become more positive or high positive value, we can tell that your strontium, okay, strontium sulfate is insoluble. Okay, it means it will become more insoluble because of that, okay? So I am just telling you based on the diagram, I can show you, yeah? What, what is important, you need to know. For hydration, for sulfate, hydration decreases more, okay? I have demonstrated using the diagram, okay? And if you look at, okay, let's say for hydroxide, okay? For hydroxide, Okay, the lattice energy decreases more. Okay, lattice energy decreases more. So I use the same diagram, okay, same diagram, and I'll try to actually draw, yeah, uh, see whether we can actually get the result that we expect, yeah. So here, okay, I'm going to have strontium, okay, strontium hydroxide. So I put strontium hydroxide, so solid, okay, and then, okay, now, okay, I I know, okay, lattice energy is decreasing more, yeah? So uh, maybe I just put, it is decreasing, so maybe I take, maybe decrease to this much, yeah? Yeah, I put decrease to this much. So I am going to actually draw a line over here, okay? And then I just put, okay, this is going to be my strontium, okay, 2 plus gas, and then 2 OH minus gas, okay? So this is going to be my lattice energy. Okay, this is my lattice energy. And this is going to be the one over here. This is the decrease in my lattice energy, okay? Now, if I want to show, okay, my uh, hydration, okay? Do remember hydration, the decrease in hydration is less than this decrease, okay? So it means if I follow the same thing, if I copy this one, I copy, okay? I can actually paste it over here. Okay, I paste it. I'm not adjusting anything yet. Okay, if I put over here. Now, the decrease over here, okay, the decrease over here should be greater, okay, compared to the decrease over here. Let's say from here to here, this is the distance, yeah? This is the distance. So maybe I decrease maybe from here to here only. I want a smaller decrease, okay, a smaller decrease rather than, okay, bigger decrease as from here to here. I want a smaller decrease, okay? So what I do, I just bring this up a bit. Okay, I bring this up a bit. And then now I will draw a line. And then I am going to represent, this is going to be my strontium hydroxide, okay? Which is going to be strontium hydroxide, which is going to be my aqueous. So now, this is my enthalpy of solution. What can you say? Okay, what can you say? You can see the, the distance, yeah? It's going to be the one over here, the distance is smaller, yeah? If the enthalpy of solution is smaller, okay, it means now your solution, okay, enthalpy of solution is getting 
uh, smaller. Okay, if it is getting smaller, remember, okay, if your enthalpy of solution is negative, okay, or okay, uh, if the enthalpy of solution is negative or small positive, then we can say that this is going to be soluble. In this case, I can if I want to compare these two. I can compare because the enthalpy of solution is smaller. I can say that strontium hydroxide is going to be soluble. Uh, that is the meaning, yeah, based on the diagram. So I've shown you using the diagram. Now, okay, if coming back to the lecture, yeah. So if you come back to the lecture, okay, now you should be able to understand the entire situation in more uh, clearer form, yeah. So you can see for sulfates, okay, lattice energy and hydration decreases, but what is important, okay, you need to remember the hydration decrease more for sulfate. The reason, okay, even in the textbook, they mentioned that sulfate is a bigger ion, yeah, which is true, yeah, which is true. Sulfate is a bigger ion, and because hydration is actually counted separately, the decrease is going to be by larger value. Okay, for those who wants to explore more, yeah, there is a uh, another video, yeah, that I've done. Uh, we are having short of time. We won't have enough time to cover this in detail. But if you want, okay, there is a video on this. Yeah. Now this is going to be decreasing at larger value, and you can see for hydroxide is the other way around. Yeah, lattice energy is going to decrease at larger value, and this will make your enthalpy of solution yeah to change. So enthalpy of solution will become more positive here. Enthalpy of solution will become more negative over here. That makes your solubility to become increased over here. Solubility decrease over here. That explains the entire thing. Yeah. Now this is the part last time. Okay, in lecture two I mentioned. Okay, we will come back over here and then we will have this back to the future moment. Yes, this is the part. Okay, the same question. Yeah, describe and explain how solubility of magnesium sulfate compares to barium sulfate. You see, barium sulfate is going to be insoluble. Yeah, or you can tell barium sulfate is more insoluble compared to magnesium sulfate. But you cannot just stop over there. This is not AS. You must actually explain further. Okay, when you explain further, you need to tell, yeah, and uh, what happens, yeah, you can see here, okay, solubility decreases, and then they have mentioned about, okay, they are talking about LE and HE, LE is lattice energy, HE is hydration energy, and you, I told you also, okay, for sulfate, which one decrease more, hydration decrease more, so you can see, hydration decrease more than LE, you must mention this, okay. You must mention all this, and then you will get the full points, uh, full mark. Okay, if you want to know, know more, okay, of course, you can actually go through this video. Yeah, and then if you want more videos, let's say you want to actually find out or you want to revise on lattice energy, there are a, a number of videos that I listed over here, which will help you to understand more. Okay, and this one, okay, we will actually study in the next lecture, yeah. So we won't have enough time for these transition elements, yeah. But okay, if you want, yeah, if you want, if you have time, yeah, please go through this part. There are some videos that I've seen uh, put over here. Uh, this is also going to help you to uh, to for me to introduce, yeah, will help uh, you to. Uh, get to know more okay, about transition metals rather than just immediately learn everything about transition metal. Yeah, transition metals can be difficult. Yeah, it involves a lot of memorizing and so on. Yeah, but if you want, you can actually start earlier okay, by going through the videos. Yeah, uh, that's all. Yeah, that's all from me. Okay, if in summary, if you want uh, me to uh, summarize what I teach you today, yeah, you see, I taught you about ion polarization. Yeah, I taught you about solubility. Yeah, solubility. So ion polarization. Okay, you just roughly can see uh, what affects okay, the ion polarization. Yeah, smaller cation. Okay, uh, and then the radius. Okay, must be smaller. Yes, a radius must be smaller. Charge should be greater. Yeah, and then uh, I also explained to you 
how do you actually apply the concept okay, of this lattice energy enthalpy of solution and enthalpy of hydration. And I also uh, explain about the thermal stability, yeah, which is an important concept for the uh, ion polarization. More cation polarization towards the anion, the anion will become weaker. Yeah, the anion will become weaker. Thermal decomposition can happen. Yeah, and then I uh, showed you, okay, which is I think I will give you this uh, also through uh, through your teachers. Yeah, you can actually go through this note as well. How to draw and then come back to this conclusion. Yeah, that uh, the enthalpy of solution is going to be changing based on the diagram. Yeah, so you can prove yeah directly from the diagram. Some students, they are very good. They can actually get it directly from the equation. Okay, but most of the students cannot get. Yeah, for most of you, if you cannot get, please refer to this uh, drawing. This will really help you. Yeah, that's all from me. Yeah, uh, thank you guys. Okay, see you again on Thursday. Yeah, see you guys. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Gopi. Thank you, Boy, sir. See you, sir.